Hello YouTube, um, I am sorry for the super late um, update on my fab loss phase. I have had a really busy couple of weeks um, in my personal life, in my professional life, and it's just been one of those weird couple of weeks where everything kind of builds and gets on top of, well, me. I'm super, super anxious as a person. So when my professional life and my personal life get really hectic, I um, kind of retreat. Um, and things like my social media uh, and my social life, <laughs> anything social, takes a huge hit. Um, okay, so the last time I, oh, and also, yeah, sorry about this room. My husband is DJing and it's really, really loud um, and it's house music. So it's not even like something that we can kind of melodically vibe through. It's like intense. So I'm in like our, uh, I guess you could call it like our storage room. We've got, uh, I think this is called a crazy catch, casual didgeridoo. The blinds are closed because this is also where we keep our wine of which we have a lot but I haven't drunk any in a couple of weeks and I will explain why. So, the last time I left you guys, I was in Berlin, which I was a bit disappointed by Berlin. All my friends and family were super excited that I was going to Berlin and told me that it was like the best place ever and I was gonna love it and I'd never wanna come home. I didn't love it. I, uh, obviously historically, it was, really interesting and uh, definitely beneficial to go and learn um, and explore and do all the touristy stuff. Um, you know, doing the wall and Checkpoint Charlie and all these amazing historical things about Berlin. Um, but other than that, I'm not really a big raver. Um, I'm not really a big like party girl anymore. I definitely had my time doing that but um, I haven't been for a few years now and I didn't love it. Uh, my husband was like, we've got to come back and like do all the raves and stuff. And I was like, I'm done. You can come back with the boys. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on Berlin. I'm sure a lot of people out there will strongly disagree with me, including all of my lot, but there you go. Anyway, so that was uh, week five. Um, and that saw me on uh, 1,665 calories a day, still no refeeds. Um, so I was 137 pounds and had been like consistently weighing in around about that number. Um, so I guess I'll talk you through what happened throughout week five into week six. So that was two weeks ago now. So throughout week five, nothing happened. I didn't change at all. I still uh, continue to weigh in pretty much uh, every day at 137 pounds, give or take, a, pound, um, a decimal here or there. Um, but basically nothing changed, um, which was really frustrating. Initially, I was kind of thinking like, oh God, like, did I not take enough time reversing? Has my uh, metabolism adapted? Is this going to be a real schlog um, and potentially a really unsuccessful schlog, which does happen sometimes and it has happened to me before when I haven't taken enough time away. And then I just had to keep saying to myself like, no, you're on 1,665 calories. And for me, historically, like that is actually quite high in a fat loss phase specifically. So I was like, don't panic, just make another change. Um, so the start of week six, again, I was weighing in at 137 pounds, no changes. Um, and I decided to make a kind of quite a change because at this point it's the start of week six and I've only lost three pounds which is means I'm kind of behind at that point I would have liked to have lost like a minimum of five ideally six or seven so to have lost three I was a bit like oh, okay I'm just gonna have to step it up a notch 
Um, but as always, like I go into this, like I said in my previous video, I'm a lot more um, instinctive about it now and patient with it. And I feel it out because my body's really changed. I have a lot more muscle mass. I also have a lot of metabolic adaptation, having been doing this for seven and a half years um, and not knowing earlier on, which I wish I had known, um, about metabolic adaptation and how to come in and out of a fat loss phase for long term goals and long-term results um, instead of just doing it for the short-term uh, rewards which is what I definitely was doing for years. So right start of week six again 137 pounds definitely behind so I just dug in. I added uh, five minutes to my daily cardio. So I went from doing 35 minutes of steady state six days a week to 40 minutes um, of cardio six days a week. Five of these sessions stayed steady state. One of them, I uh, did a hit steady state split. So for the sixth session of the week, I would do uh, 20 minutes of hit into it, and then I would basically kind of cool down and come into this for the last 20 minutes. So again, it's 40 minutes, six days a week, but one of those sessions is now split between uh, a hit session and uh, a steady state session. So hit, 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 and then kind of cool down into low intensity. And then I also decreased my calories via carbohydrates. So week six, uh, I stayed at 65 grams of fat, no change there. Stayed at 140 grams of protein as I've continuously stayed at, no change there. But I dropped my carbohydrates from 130 grams of carbohydrates daily to 100 grams of carbohydrates daily, which was a 30 gram deduction of carbohydrates, which took me down uh, 120 calories uh, deducted, which ultimately meant that I started week six at 1,545 calories. So 120 calories lower than the week previous. Um, so, I mean, 120 calories drop is not insignificant, but it, it's also not extreme. Um, coupled with a five minute cardio increase is kind of makes me feel comfortable that I'm doing something to get out of my 137 pound sticking point. Um, and then just kind of throwing in some hit into that steady state. I was like, I really want to start to see 136 pounds. So throughout week six, I um, was waking up at 137, 137, and then started waking up at 136, 136, um, and ultimately I took an average for um, the entirety of week six and the start of week seven at 136 pounds. So I finally uh, managed to kick 137 to the curb. <laughs> That's not lost on me how not cool that was. Um, so start of week seven, and that's where I'm at now. I'm in the middle of week seven right now. Uh, start of week seven, uh, 136 pounds, which again is the start of week seven. It's only four pounds down from my start point, which is good. I mean, it's not no pounds down or one pound or two pound. I mean, four pounds down is, is really good, um, but I'm still behind. Um, and... It's interesting, you know, I'm waking up at this point at 136 pounds, looking leaner. I'm looking in the mirror and thinking, oh, I look different than I did last week or the week before or um, the week before, like I look different. And I can see that, but I'm at that like middle ground point and this is what always happens with me and my body, where by lunchtime, I look exactly the same as I did day one, week one, before anything happened. And I'm like, damn it, so it's a good, it's a good indication that when I'm fasted and um, rested, I'm waking up looking different. But it's also a good indication that I haven't had a huge amount 
of progress if by lunchtime I look like I um, haven't even started my fat loss phase yet. So I was like, okay, right. Um, waking, waking up at one three six is great, but uh, I'm behind and I, I need to I need to do a bit more now. Um, so I added another five minutes to my cardio, which took me from uh, 40 minutes, uh, six days a week to 45 minutes, six days a week. Again, same, same. Five sessions are steady state. Um, and one of my sessions is a pretty even split of hit and steady state. So I'll do like 20 minutes um, of hit and then I'll, I'll go into my cool down and that'll end up being 25 minutes thereafter of less. Um, so it's an added five minutes um, and I also decreased my calories. But this week I left my carbs at 100 grams. I think I said in my last video that I like to kind of hit my basement temporary basement at 100 grams of carbs when I'm about halfway through a diet phase because it basically I eat five times a day which you don't have to do I just like eating five five times a day it sits really well with me um in terms of my breakfast pre-workout post-workout dinner and then like usually like I'll have like a protein mug cake or something before bed something sweet before bed um really agrees with me so that's what i like to do and if i have 100 grams of carbs it's like 20 grams of carbs potentially per meal which is a really easy way to have a huge voluminous veggie salad or even some fast digesting carbs like a bowl of cereal whatever um it's a really easy number for me and gives me options but isn't like i mean it's 100 grams of carbs it's not you know 300 which would be fun um, <laughs> but it's not um so carbs are staying at 100 grams. Again, 140 grams of protein. I won't change that. Uh, took fats from 65 grams only down to 60. So I'm still really high fat. Um, 60 grams of fat for me is really high. Um, but it still means that I've had a slight deduction of uh, 45 calories, which has now brought me down to a nice, happy, even 1500 calories daily um now i am not gonna put in any refeeds this week but that will probably change next week so next week this is week seven i'm halfway through week seven now i'm still waking up at 136 pounds and i'm really hoping that come week eight i can break through that barrier and come down to 135 i mean in seven weeks to go from 140 pounds to 136 pounds as i said it is good movement but it's not it's not enough that i feel like oh i'm definitely going to be ready for my shoots in time my shoots which are in five weeks by the way uh start in five weeks it, it, it's more kind of like e i'm gonna have to dig i think and that's okay. Like I know how to, I know how to do that. I know how to get my calories low, but feel satiated. Um, you know, I know how to, I know how to train hard. I know how to time my uh, food intake, my nutrient timing around my training, so that I feel fueled for the session, so that I can recover from the session. I know I've been doing this for so long. Like I'm kind of okay with the potential that I'm going to have to dig. The things that I really struggle with when it gets a bit harder really are never anything to do with food anymore. Uh, I love wine. I love the fact that, you know, if I, because now I track and I, I count calories and macros, I love the fact that I can go out with my husband or my friends and have a glass of wine and account for it. Um, but, you know, when you really have to dig and you don't really want to be the kind of person that moans that they're not getting in shape, but you know that there are little things that you're doing that aren't really optimal, you know, you want to be able to say, no, I cut that, I took that out, so that's not it. It's like a process of elimination. It's, it's quite comforting to know that you're doing all you can be doing. And if it's not working, there's only so much, you know, there's only so much I can do. But I don't want to be like, well, I'm kind of doing mostly what I should be doing. I probably could be doing a bit extra, but I'm not going to. Like, no. The the things I find harder, things like that, cutting out the glass of wine or as it gets closer, being like, you know what? I can't go to like a pizza night with all my friends because, you know, it's it's just it just gets a bit too hard and I can't fit it in. Those are the bits I struggle with. It's really social 
things. Um, but I've been doing this for so long now that I'm quite good at the food situation. I know what foods to eat, uh, which I really like, which make me feel full and happy and satiated. I know a lot of you have my books. Um, the fat loss blitz, my four week body blitz, a lot of my favorite meals are in there. I was really nervous. I am really proud of myself that I'm the only person, um, I guess, in my area of competition um, who really writes every word of their book cover to cover. I write the intro, I write the motivational quotes, I write the workout plans, I write the recipe guide, I write the food bible. I don't, I have editors obviously who edit the book, but nobody writes for me at all. Um, and I would never put my name on something that someone else had done. Um, so when I wrote the food bible and the recipes guide of my books, I was really nervous because I was like, this is what it looks like when you diet and this is how to stay really satiated and really full and to make sure that you're eating really healthy. You know, you want your protein, you want your fiber, you want to be able to eat consistently throughout the day and feel full, but stay in your calories, you know, and that's a skill. And it means that you often end up eating some quite weird food like broccoli mash, for example. And I was really, really nervous when I did it. And I have to say it has been like the star of the show. So much so that I even put broccoli mash in my second book, The Fat Loss Blitz. Um, and I'm really happy that I think people get it. But that's the kind of thing I mean, you know, you do like a heck chicken sausages and broccoli mash, you get really lean protein in, but it's, you feel like you're eating sausages. So you don't feel like, oh, here I am with my piece of tiny, teeny grilled fish. Um, and my like piece of lettuce. No, like you eat that and you feel it's enjoyable, especially if you're a Brit, good old bang is a mash and it's filling and it macro wise hits what you need. Um, so just stuff like that. I'm just giving an example um, of how I can like get deeper and deeper into a calorie deficit and still feel full, satiated, happy, fine. But the things that do suffer and anyone who's ever done a diet before will tell you this um sometimes it is your social life that being said for my clients and my readers and my followers you guys don't have to you know get fully naked in front of a camera and try and sell yourself but as a fitness professional um you you guys are just trying to get in shape because you want to feel good you want to look good like and in in that case like going out for a pizza with your friends going out and having some wine with your husband is fine like that is not a problem but the kind of level that i want to get to um and feel like i should be getting to if i want to continue to prove myself is a little bit more extreme. And and any of you who've listened to my podcast, the podcast will know that I consistently say, the more extreme the goal, the more extreme the sacrifice. So if your goal isn't, you know, to do what, what I do or whatever, then you don't need to be really kind of anal about it. But if my goal is to get shredded and see veins, I do, I have to push and there's no two ways about it. And you know, I talk about this again a lot in, in the, the podcast. I did a, a talk for um, my husband's gym. He owns an F45 in Bath and I did a nutrition talk down there a couple of weeks ago. I had way too much caffeine, it was awful. <laughs> I went out for dinner with friends after and they were like, you were talking a mile a minute. I was like, sorry. Um, but I did a talk there and I, you know, I explained to everybody that it is really hard to get into that Instagram model shape that you see on Instagram. It doesn't just happen. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of sacrifice. And the idea that people are like, you know, there are some really genetically gifted celebrities out there, female celebrities who are like, I eat a Sunday roast every week and I wake up with abs because I train really hard. And it's like, fuck off. I have never in a million years, <laughs> eaten whatever I want and gotten shredded abs. Like it's not happened. So good for you if you're genetically blessed enough to be able to do that, amazing. But please do not spread the word that that's how it works because I've been PTing people for seven and a half years and um, I have yet to have a client like that. Although I do have friends like that. Um, but it's rare, it's really rare. And to get in that kind of shape takes a huge amount of effort and sacrifice. 
um, and it doesn't just happen. So yeah, I, I wish that people would stop saying that, um, unless you are genetically gifted, in which case, oh, I'm so jealous, but well done. Um, so yeah, I'm rambling. I always end these videos rambling, sorry about that. So I'll do a week up eight update next week. Um, And um, I have actually some really, the reason I am so busy and I'm not really saying what I'm doing is because I'm not announcing it yet, but I have some really big, really fun news, um, which I'm really excited to announce. And once the ball is rolling and I'm out of this funk I'm in, <laughs> this stress funk, um, I'm just going to be super excited about. So, yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much if you've ever sent me a really nice message. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it makes me feel really good. So thank you and I'll catch you in week eight. Bye.